Hi everybody, and welcome to part four of episode six in my Piano to Orchestra series. I've broken this episode up into many shorter videos so that I can thoroughly discuss all of the details about the orchestration process for a piece that's over three minutes total. In part three, I orchestrated the A section of the piece, which is just the first eight measures, but I orchestrated it several different ways. Today, I'll look at three of those different orchestrations and continue on through the B section. So a main theme of today will be transitioning from one section to the next, and how I decide to orchestrate a section is dependent on what came previously. Before I start, I just want to mention that I've uploaded the MIDI files, music XML files, audio stems, Dorico, Cubase, and Studio One files to my Patreon page, so check those out if you're interested. Okay, I'll start by looking at this orchestration of section A. Here I have violins one and two doubled with flutes. I start both instrument groups with no vibrato, then move to poco vibrato in measure five. I also have violins muted throughout. So the question is, with this orchestration in place, how should I continue on to section B? Looking at the piano score here on the right, there are two main components now in section B, a relatively static background in the upper register and a descending foreground component divided between two distinct parts. That part is very similar to the A section material, though registrally lower. But the important thing to note is that the A section transitions into the B section with the resolution of the two lines. The note B from the top line here has already resolved in beat four of that last measure, but it naturally wants to settle on the sustaining B in the next measure as well. So it wouldn't make as much sense to have the same line or the same instruments playing that top line from section A jump down suddenly to the moving part in section B. Likewise, the C sharp from flute two in second violins naturally wants to resolve either down to the B or up to the D. Those notes are actually the two notes that start this new moving texture in section B, so I suppose you could give the second flute and second violins this foreground material from section B. However, you'd then be breaking up the pairing of instruments from section A in half. If your goal through this transition is fluidity and coherence, then I don't recommend breaking this flute and violin combination up suddenly in measure 9. Instead, let the flute and violin timbre resolve together in measure 9 and give the section B descending material to a new instrument group. So how did I decide what instrument group to give the new material to? Remember that my goal is for smooth transitions here. This piece is all about slow evolutions of timbres, not sudden timbral and textural shifts. So perhaps I want to pick instruments with a similar timbre to what came before, and the new instruments need to fit the register, obviously. My instinct would be either to split up violas in half on these descending lines, or to place the lines in two clarinets. Of all the woodwinds, clarinets would work the best in terms of range, and their timbre in this register can continue that soft, warm sound from section A. Divisi violas alone might work too, but like section A where I had a pair of strings and a pair of winds, here I've chosen to have two clarinets and Divisi violas together. Flutes can take on those high register sustains from the upper staff of the piano score. I have the violins fade away here, leaving just the flutes on those notes, plus some punctuation by harp. I decided to remove violins just to thin out this texture a bit. In measure 15, when the top line starts to move into the foreground, I introduce oboes in octaves, so I'm slowly building up this texture by adding instruments, even just one at a time. But the overall density is still very light. Also, since the violins were muted in the first section, to create more timbral coherence, I have the violas muted here in section B as well. Onto the second half of section B, here's what the piano score looked like. There are three main things happening here. First, the top staff, which builds on the static sustain texture from before, but now has a bit more pulse to it, and it extends into a higher octave. I've chosen to divide this texture up into sustaining flutes and oboes, plus harp to get more of that quarter note pulse, plus glockenspiel to get the higher notes. This is just a background texture, so I don't want it to stick out of the texture too much.
So in the middle staff material, I decided to bring back violins one and two, joining them with the two clarinets. I removed Davisi violas here because I thought the full sections of violins would be needed in now what's a slightly thicker texture overall. And then the bottom staff material, I thought it might be nice to continue the trend of pairing a string section with a woodwind instrument. And even though violas could technically play this melodic line, I decided to also continue the trend of working my way down in register, adding in lower instruments over time. So I chose the cello section, and I have the cellos in unison with a bass clarinet. Then bassoons, violas, and basses have the remaining sustaining background parts. Okay, so overall, I think this first orchestration was very simple and straightforward. I didn't try to do anything too advanced, but I think it still sounds nice and accomplishes my goal of slowly building this very simple texture up from the beginning. So here's a different orchestration of the A section that I made in my last video. This one features a combination of flutes and oboes on the melodic material, with first and second violins playing static harmonic sustains. So the strings are clearly in more of a background texture in this version than in the last version. And because I introduced this harmonic timbre, my instinct was to continue this playing technique, at least initially in section B. Having harmonics for only eight measures wouldn't be satisfying, I want to justify using it at all to begin with, so I've chosen to have the B section start with harmonics once again, but let that harmonic texture evolve slightly. That's, I think, a big theme of this episode in general, introducing an idea and letting it grow and evolve. If you introduce an idea and then quickly take it away, the audience might wonder, how does this all fit together? But if you introduce an idea and then slowly change details about it, creating a coherent narrative around that idea, the listener will be very aware of that process. So I chose to have the string section play harmonics with some random dynamic swells. I happen to have a patch from the Orchestral Tools Time Macro Library that does just this. I'm being very lazy about the notation here. This is something that if I wanted a real orchestra to play, I'd have to provide more detail and instruction for what I want. Probably in the form of a program note and perhaps clearer notation like using boxed aleatoric notation I might do a video on that kind of thing at some point if there's some interest. Anyway, here's what this sounds like. I think this texture bridges the A and B sections nicely. And the swells provide a bit of motion in the texture that helps shape the arc of the beginning of this piece. In the woodwinds, I've just sort of modified the orchestration from the previous version. Since I had oboes present in the A section alongside flutes, I decided to keep the oboe-flute combination going in backgrounds in section B. And similarly, I have clarinets on the melodic descending material.
The only other part of this texture is in the harp and vibraphone. I've added them to provide a bit of articulation on the downbeats, and because I think they fit timbrely alongside the string harmonics for that glassy, almost metallic ringing sound. Moving on to the final eight measures of B, here are the woodwinds plus horns. You can see I've increased the overall density of the texture from that first version. And the background texture is definitely more complicated than that of the first version. Although all I'm really doing is allowing that pedal B background to move texturally and registrally through the upper wind section, following a similar pattern to the original top staff of the piano score. I also have horns now on backgrounds in measure 21, by introducing them here, I'll be able to transition to a brassier texture more easily in the next section. Horns really work well as a timbral bridge from the woodwinds to other brass instruments. They just blend well with most instruments in general. And because I've added more instruments on the background, I need more instruments on the foreground to balance, so now I have two bassoons on that mid-low register melody. And you'll see in a second that strings are supporting the moving lines as well. But here's what the winds and brass sound like alone. And finally, here are the strings plus vibraphone and harp on these last eight measures. Everyone is a little more active than in that first version, including violins on the background pedal Bs. I found another patch, I think this one from the Time Micro Library, that is aleatoric tremolo bursts. So I used that in the violin too. Then I added a complementary violin one tremolo harmonic part that adds a bit more motion and slightly more intensity in the sound. Violas are doubling clarinets here, and celli are divisi with the upper part doubling bassoons and the harp is more active here with eighth notes providing a bit more pulse. Keep in mind that while this looks way more active than the last version, everything here is still marked with soft dynamics. All right, so I'll play through this entire second orchestration of sections A and B. I decided to try orchestrating one more version from that last video. I won't go into as much detail here discussing it, I'll just mention a bit about my thought process. In this one I had violins playing Cole Neutrato, which produces a very delicate and soft texture. Like the harmonics in the last version, I wanted to keep this texture going a bit into the B section, at least initially. So I decided to have them continue playing Cole Neutrato through these first eight measures of B but I also have two solo violinists playing the melodic lines. Vibraphone, harp, and piano sort of support the soloists, and flutes and oboes have sustaining backgrounds. Overall, I think it's clear that I'm scaling back on the density in this version, especially in comparison to the last one. To use solo strings effectively, you really need to thin out the texture quite a bit, so that's what I had to do. 
In the last eight measures of B, I decided to try another aleatoric texture, this one in the upper woodwinds. I'm using another patch from the time series, and I've attempted to notate a similar thing here, although to be honest, I think a boxed notation would work better. Like I said, I'll probably make a video on what I mean by boxed notation or aleatoric music. Essentially, it's letting the players make certain decisions about durations, entrances, all sorts of things to create a bit of controlled randomness. So in the rest of the orchestra, I have both violin sections playing saltasto alongside saltasto celli. And harp, piano, vibraphone, and glockenspiel help create an intimate and delicate pulse. In this orchestration, I definitely made a conscious effort to try different types of textures, and really it all stemmed from using the Cole Neutrato texture in the beginning. Right off the bat, I was using a non-standard technique, so I thought, well, I might as well have the rest of this be a little different as well. So I'll play this third orchestration now all the way through. So in the next video, I'll probably work through the rest of the piece. I've gone into a lot of detail so far, trying different kinds of things in both section A and B. And I think it's time now I just pick one version, one of these three I showed today, and finish the piece. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Remember, all the materials for this video are on my Patreon page, so check that out if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.